Well, Thomas, good afternoon to you. Uh, another tough game this this weekend. How's the squad shaping up ahead of the, the international break as far as the players are concerned, fitness-wise? Um, fitness-wise, we are the same squad that played Swansea. I just need to think. <laughs> so, Matt Speck is still out. Uh, yeah, Christian Argaard, Pontus, Mats Roslow, Shanton, Baptist, have I forgot anyone? Mm, no. So, a good uh, push before the um, international break. Um, that'll be good to refresh. And for some players, not refresh, but uh, of course it's, a, it's another physical load, but we all, all, all all of us know then when they go with their national team is you know also in a way fresh air um, different environment and um, another perspective mm -hmm. so so then we regroup and reshape and hopefully we have some of the um, the injured guys uh, closer closer to the team because of course um, that that will help us of course is that the hope that you can get some of those players back because again after that after that it's something like nine games in four weeks isn't it um, 13. It's we a play lot. a Carabao Cup as well. Of course. So we it's, play so every third day in, uh, I don't know how many weeks. I have stopped counting. One game at a time. So you need you need as many players in the yeah. squad as you possibly can in order to, to yeah. just to, to yeah. give yourself the best chance. Yeah, 100%. We need that. Um, and hopefully they are available for, for Wickham. Uh, we will see, of course, you know, every day counts in terms of... Uh, um, uh, getting the injury guys back, but uh, Pontus looking in a good place, um, uh, Christian looking in a good place, uh, Matt Speck should also be back uh, for, for for that game. Uh, I don't know if Pontus and Christian is 100% ready, but they're looking, it, it could be a possibility. Um, Shandon, there will still be a couple of months, and uh, Matt Roslow is getting closer, so that's good. Not not ready for Wickham, but... Uh, mm. um, Ahead of the Middlesbrough game, then I mean this is a, this is a, a, a tough challenge. Um, we know what Neil does with with his teams. We know how difficult he's going to make it. Yeah, um, looking forward to, to welcome Neil um, Warnock and his coaching staff and Middlesbrough and and, and the team to our new stadium. Um, I just must say, if you, I'm almost a, a rookie uh, compared to to Neil Warnock and. Uh, his, um, I would say, legacy speaks for itself, and CV, I think, is impressive. If you've been a manager for 1,500 games in, I think it's only in, the, in England, I don't know, we have that rule with 1,000 games, and I really love that. Uh, I think it's fantastic. And then, you know, is he the only one who passed 1,500? I think he is. Must, must somebody, yeah, which is massive and extremely impressive to be in this business for so many years. Um, you are just made of something special. So, uh, and what he's done through his career is, is amazing. So, um, I'm looking forward to, to meet him again. Uh, I haven't played against him as a, as a head coach, but we, we I faced him when I was assistant coach. And um, what he's done, if we speak about Middlesbrough, I think is, is relatively impressive as well. I think they are extremely solid, you know, just on the, the, the 10 games, we know that they are, on actual goal, um, the least conceded um, uh, amount of goals in this season in, in championship. They have conceded the, the fewest cross crosses. I think also the fewest shots or something like that um, on Opta. Um, and the way they play is a, a Neil Warnock classic, uh, which is extremely efficient. Um, going forward, a lot of physicality and playing direct, so we need to be on our game in terms of the second ball and, and, and stop the crosses, uh, they're really good at that. Um, and offensively we need to deal with the, with the man marking, um, which they do very well. Uh, because you can say, ah, that must be easy to track them around. No, because you don't face that every week. And I think there's different styles and different tactics. And if you know your style and tactic to perfection, which they do, then it's always difficult, mm -hmm. no matter what style it is. And, and I suppose with the, the nature of the, the season at the moment, you don't have a lot of time, do you, between two, between games? So you're switching from taking on a Swansea side who play 
differently mm -hmm. to a Middlesbrough side and you mm -hmm. don't have a lot of lot of opportunity really from a, from a coaching point of view to, to actually get those messages across, do you? No, I agree. Uh, of course, we try to uh, find various ways in terms of how can we get those messages uh, across in, um, in a short turnaround, everything from from video to, to meetings to on the pitch to, to send them uh, clips. Uh, so, so, so do it differently so we don't massively all of them and also try to really that's that's normal <laughs> keep it keep it really i'm not saying short it's not the the message keep it sharp because it's not about keeping it short it's like oh no 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 sharp is sometimes it just need 20 minutes sometimes it is only eight minutes but we need to have the the um, the most important important messages out there to, to the players, either on the pitch or in the in the video or with, with WhatsApp groups or whatever. And in this spell of games, obviously, we've seen Ivan continue uh, and to score goals. The onus, though, is on other players to, to help out on that as well, because if you know all the pressure is on one mm -hmm. uh, scorer, that's not the, the Brentford way, is it, really, to, to do that? So it's, uh, it's a way of... You, you'd be looking for goals from elsewhere. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think it's no... Uh, I, I've seen, I guess you've seen the stats as well. Our our four other wingers and uh, even I take Tariq uh, forced into that. Of course, he um, he uh, haven't had had many chances. So, but but especially Sergi and Saman and, and Brian, um, they need to add more goals. Um, of course, uh, they know and they want to and they work hard to do it. So no complaints on that. And sometimes it's also a coincidence why they haven't scored. Um, we know Brian is 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 goal. He he gave us goals, and he will produce that. I'm not in doubt. I think he gave what five or six assists already this season. So six assists and uh, and a goal is is really good. Um, but but we need more goals from from that area. Uh, I still think we are among the highest scorer in the league. Uh, um, so so sometimes it's it's a coincidence that is ten goals from Ivan. Um, I love it to be consistent with <laughs> one goal in average, and then we add on top of that with some goals from the wingers. That would be fantastic. Uh, but sometimes they come in in spells. Uh, and then just two quick final questions. Firstly, in regards to if you were to secure the three points tomorrow, and you look at going into the, into the second international break, would you be satisfied with that return of points? <sighs> I think even if we won 11 out of 11 games, oh no, yeah, then I will still be, of course, satisfied with the points, but I will still look at some of the performance and mm, we still have a high level there. Um, so let's see. We will go into the game and um, we do everything we can to win. And we know it's going to be an unbelievable, tough task, but we are up for it. And, and finally, just a fun one, really. Um, Neil Warnock is a qualified shropodist. Um, which I think he did as he, you know, when he was playing and he's qualified what? Chiropodist uh, yeah. uh, or pedometry. I think he, he's got qualification. He used to look after his players' feet. When you were young, obviously football was a, is a passion for yours. What, what, is there anything else, any other career that you thought you might have liked to have done when you were a young Thomas sitting <laughs> doing his homework, thinking I'd like to be a dentist? Uh, nah, no, not dentist. Uh, I. Um, I think it was something I would have been a teacher. I think that was the um, the thing, which is similar to what football. Yeah, coaching exactly. Is. So, so I would have been. And that I'm pretty sure. Actually, I I applied um, for yeah, what you call studying teaching uh, at university. I didn't get into the uh, studying sport. I applied for both, uh, and then I got into be a teacher. And I thought, what? Why didn't they allow me to get into the university? So I called them. I said, what are you doing? And actually, they made a mistake. So I got in. So I didn't call them. Maybe I wouldn't have been here. So he, because Ethan did PE teaching, didn't he? He's a yeah, yeah. qualified PE yeah. teacher. Brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome.